Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bad Movie Brothers. I'm Eric. I am Chad. And this time we watched Grunt, the wrestling movie. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I needed it. You needed this one? Yep. <laughs> the best movie we've seen so far. Probably. Like, probably, right? It was pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, this, was a, this was a church garage sale find. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. A quarter well spent. Yeah, I, there's real wrestlers in this movie. Yeah, a bunch of them. You may not know that. Well, like, I mean, I know my, I know Adrian Street. And Miss Linda. Yeah, and I know, uh, uh, whatever you want to call her, Queen Kong or Matilda the Hun or whatever you want to call her. Yeah, both of, yeah, both of them were original Glow Girls. Right. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And then, uh, American Starship Eagle is Dan Spivey. He's okay. a real wrestler. All right, good to know. Looks a lot like Steve Austin. Fair enough. A lot of guys looked a lot like Steve then, Austin uh, in this movie. And now there's going to be a lot of big fat men hitting the ground. Dick Murdoch's in the movie. Yeah. And there's others. I can't remember them all. Sure. But this, this spoke to you. Oh, of course. You know already. You know that it did. What? What? So, t so give me the lowdown. Like, what did you find the most exciting about this movie? We should probably tell people about the movie. To some extent. So well, we, that, that could wait. Can't okay, it? all right. Can't that wait? Sure. So, mm -hmm. again, I plugged it in not knowing what it is. All I saw is grunt exclamation point on the DVD. That's the title of the movie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you didn't you didn't put in the rest of it. No, well now in grunt. my in my defense, I had texted you a picture the of this VHS movie. tape a couple of months ago. You had to know it was Dude. coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be, that, so many things, so many things. No, this is this is grunt, but, grunt. Yeah, it's a great, great looking movie. It's pretty great. I'm sorry. Yeah, it clearly spoke to me, and two minutes in, a guy loses his head in a wrestling match. I'm in love. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. Well, I suppose, so this is, a, this is a, a fake documentary, more or less, about, uh, <laughs> it's very, hey, man, hey, man. This is a very difficult movie fake. to describe. What do you mean it's not? There was no Mad Dog. That's not real. It's, it may or may not be predetermined. <laughs> the, match, the matches are real. The story. Right. Yeah. Let's, we're going to go behind kayfabe yeah. on this movie for a minute, if we can. But the movie, hey, I'm yeah. happy that the movie didn't break kayfabe. <laughs> so the movie is about, I don't even know what's, so Mad Dog is a wrestler. He's in a wrestling match with Skull Crusher. He decapitates Skull Crusher and then disappears. A cult then rises around another Correct. wrestler called The Mask that people think is Mad Dog in disguise. And a documentary film director and a crazy person run around, I think, L.A. <laughs> trying to figure out if Mask is Mad Dog. And this is all an excuse to show us a bunch of wrestling footage. Do you think they meant it to be funny? <laughs> that is an excellent question that I think goes to the heart of Grunt the Wrestling Movie. I don't know. Like, because it's, it's a movie that seems very, very influenced by, like, a Spinal Tap. But it never yeah, seems yeah. to settle on if it wants to be the what spinal t the it wants to be too wrestling what Spinal Tap is to metal, or if it wants right. to be, you know, more or less a film version of what like the WWF or Glow would be. 
Yeah, it, it really was like 1980s WWF or Glow movie style. That's right. really what it was. Right, but it keeps... Here's what I'm going to tell you. All of the parts that were the wrestling, I loved. Uh-huh. And there's a point okay. in this movie about halfway through where it takes a hard right turn and does not care about the director and the weird guy anymore and is just wrestling. Right. And from then on, I am like into this movie. But all the stuff I, with it, the director. I, the mask was a great character. Was it, I didn't love the mask. But I loved all yep. of the other wrestlers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're right. It's, it's yeah, but the, you're right. The director, awful. Oh my gosh. He's like Steve Irwin's kid or something. We screwed up. We shouldn't have gone to her job anyway, I and mean, that was a bad idea. That was this yesterday. Is this is now. I'll be cool. Be in the moment. He's bad, and then his sidekick through the movie, uh, I believe, Dr. Tweed, I think his name is. He is the head of the Mask is Mad Dog fan club. For $24 a year, you get a membership into the Mad Dog is Mask fan club. And for an extra $12.95, you get one of these handmade, very nice, barking Mad Dog guns. <laughs> He's the right. worst. I hate that yeah, guy. I agree. Yeesh. He's super gross. He drives. I guess he owns a taxi. Uh, but but he never drove it for fares. I'm not sure. No, it didn't seem like definitely the first time we, he shows up in a taxi. I assumed he had taken a taxi somewhere. And then they just keep right, getting yeah. in this taxi, it wasn't and he's clear that clearly he was driving. driving. It. Yeah, it yeah. was weird. Super weird, and he's just super weird. So they, I could get rid of that. And with them, I think is where. Most of the stuff that you're talking about happens. Yes. Like most of the is this a comedy type stuff. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure if they were trying to be funny, if it just ended up being funny. But uh, either way, it was funny <laughs> to me, but it was good still. I think the parts that weren't trying to be funny, like weren't trying really hard, I thought were funny. But like early on, there's a whole sequence, a very Spinal Tap or Christopher Guest type sequence where they go to a tattoo removal specialist and he's talking about that, you would ha that they have a new procedure where they cut off your arm and replace it with somebody else's arm. Arm transplants, is that what it sounds like it means? Precisely. The entire arm is removed and a donor arm is sewn in place. Right, right, right. And that's definitely supposed to be funny. But is uh, not funny. <laughs> it didn't matter, man. I liked it. I don't know. I'm with it. This is the movie. This is the movie that will define yeah. us. And you know what's interesting? Tell me. So what got me hooked is the immediate decapitation of Skull Crusher. Yeah, which, which I think we have and to circle that, back to. Yeah, we're doing it right now. Okay. That, that maneuver is what ripped off Mick Foley's ear in real life. So it is a very dangerous thing. Good to know. And they do do a surprisingly nice... Do do? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Professional television. They do a nice callback to it at the end where Mad Dog, or I'm sorry, where Mask has another guy then in that same maneuver. Right. Exactly. And I did think, is another guy's head going to come off? Well, no, because Mad Dog came and saved him. That's right. Spoiler alert. Mask is not Mad Dog. It's Mad Dog! It's Mad Dog! And I... I'm not sure who played Mad Dog in the movie because yeah. some of the names... Uh -huh. that they show at the end on the castle. Those are kayfabe names. Those aren't their yeah. real names. Right. So I'm not sure if that was Magnum T.A. or not. I don't know if you know who Magnum T.A. is. I don't, but... either but way, it looked like him. When I looked at IMDb, it wasn't anybody I recognized. Now, here's what I yeah, will say, but they though. were all kayfabe names. True. Well, but, you know, you'd still yep. think it would be... So, like Because the ones I recognized were taken care of well, you know? 
Mm -hmm. But here's right. what I, here's an interesting side note. This movie has no Wikipedia page. I know. I looked. <laughs> so part I do have to question if this is a movie. What? Wait a second. Okay. All right. I'm holding on. We have the new cat. Oh boy. For our viewers at the home. The premiere of Ella. Ella. Now, first, so introducing Ella the cat. Ella the cat. How I how did we name home. Ella? Oh, Ella is a type of hop from beer. <laughs> so Nicole named her. Sure. You know what? It's a good name. That makes sense to me. And she looks like a hoppy cat. Yes, very hoppy. Did like she enjoy grunt? She did enjoy grunt. Good. So did Juniper. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. <laughs> so back to the decapitation. Well, I remember that time Mad Dog uh, had a decapitation going for him. So this, the Continue. opening, so the wrestling scenes are the highlight of this movie. The opening wrestling scene, though. Except for, I. Go the, ahead, you're getting there. The, the opening wrestling scene, though, is shot in this grainy black and white with like a camera that's in the ring. And I at no point had any idea what was going on. Very disorienting. Hated it. Hated and so, it. Yeah. Hated it. And so at the start, I thought, oh, man, we're in trouble. And while it gets better, it does yes. build to, as my brother has said, it does build to a decapitation that when it happened, because of the way it was shot, I definitely went, wait, did that just happen? Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, I was like, did they mean for that to happen? What, no, is his head rolling on the ground now? Like, did they have a mannequin in this hole and then the head came off? What just happened? I don't know. It's very strange. And, like, I don't understand. I don't really get how it happened. I guess he drop kicked him, but did he drop kick his head off or did he drop kick the chest and then the ropes were so tight that it cut it off? I don't understand. I get, well, and I, or were the ropes razor wire? Was it some sort of rage in a cage kind of an affair? I don't know. What I do know Hard is that tell. this did lead to some, some comedy in the movie that I liked. Where in there is then, Continue. they keep saying things like, well, Skull Crusher's recovered from worse. You're the champ, Skull Crusher Johnson's manager. What do you think about the possibility that he may lose his title? Look, with all due regard to the commissioner, it is my opinion and the opinion of the fans that Skull Crusher Johnson is still the champion. Skull Crusher Johnson has come back from worse. Yeah, they didn't, he didn't, uh... He didn't defend his championship for six years. They went on for six years with this <laughs> decapitated man as their champion. There's, what? There's like a board of governors scene where they're discussing, well, it's been six years. And, and they actually say, well, and he hasn't defended the title. He's dead. Is Skull Crusher Johnson still the champion? Can a man lose his head and still retain the championship? Yeah, he's been dead. But they seem they like buried they buried him. It seems like they expect that he's going to grow his head back and be right back in there. Well, were they walking him around like uh, weekend at Bernie's every week to the to the shows, and he just wasn't wrestling? What's going on? I don't. There was even the movie even says there was a trial during which Mad right. Dog, during which Mad Dog apparently drop kicked the judge and the jury, and when they didn't show that, I was very upset. Then, in a bizarre turn of events, Mad Dog went berserk, body slamming the judge, a bailiff, and the entire jury. Yeah, upsetting, upsetting. I'll tell you that I would have liked it if they would have stuck with this idea that Skull Crusher was okay somehow, and later in the movie they just had his head doing color commentary. <laughs> Much like the, uh, the woman commentator in, in Georgia or whatever that was, she was great. I w she, she just started watching wrestling the week before. That's right. And that was the greatest match she's ever seen. This place has turned into a Parthenon, a pandemonium, and I suggest if you have any small children, you get them away from your sins right away. Never in my six months of watching wrestling have I seen anything as bloody and gory and violent as this. The mask has no mercy! This is awful. I can't look anymore. I cannot look at this. 
that that pair, there's a wrestling match in the South at one point, and the commentators are magical. There is a part then where a like a ring girl gets roughed up, and the announcers yell, "Oh no, not Mitzi!" Who's Mad Dog ripping a fan's shirt right off his back? God help anyone in his way. Not little Mitzi. Yeah, yeah, that was great. I love that. That whole he was a great character. That. The 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 challenger in that match, not Mask, right? The the gentleman that he faces, El Toro, is actually yeah, El Toro is Mondo Hector Mondo Guerrero, who actually trained all the Glow Girls for the show Glow. Well, there you go. He probably trained several of the workers in this movie. Well, according to an article by one Mr. Joe Bob Briggs. Of Monster Vision, Frank. Oh, fame. okay. That is correct. All right. He did train many hey. wrestlers on this movie. So, good job. All right. Because part of what attracted me to this movie is that it is a rare videotape that features a Joe Bob Briggs uh, quote on the top of the box. What's it say? Three stars, a 26 on the vomit meter. Joe Bob. Why? I felt the same. I didn't feel it was particularly vomity. No. So I was disappointed by that. But I will see whatever Joe Bob tells me to see. That's a given. All right. Okay. Good deal. So we are now at the point where... Mad Dog has been acquitted of, I guess, murder? I, was he acquitted? I was very confused. It wasn't one way or the other. Yeah, but at any rate, he disappears. Then Mass comes supposedly, on the scene. Yeah, supposedly he jumps off a bridge. <laughs> we all know that's nonsense. Now, let me ask you this. <laughs> At any Please. point, did you think Mask was Mad Dog? Uh, yeah, absolutely I did. Oh, I did not. The whole time I was like, come on, no way. Yeah, I thought there was going to be two of them, similar to the movie The Prestige, which is one of our father's favorite movies. I like that movie a lot, too. I can't lie. There you go. Hey, all right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought they were going to be switching back and forth, you know. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, the whole time I was ready for what eventually happened, which is that, uh, that uh, Mad Dog shows up to save the day. Right. In what is, has to be one of the greatest movie moments I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, man. Shows up on a motorcycle, revving like crazy, jumps in the ring and starts kicking butt. Not just a motorcycle, a motorcycle in the rain. Yeah, well, hey, that was very Prince-like. It was amazing. <laughs> and like, at a wrestling match, so somebody had, like, opened garage doors and were yeah, ready Yeah, I mean, it's not in, a, not in an arena or anything. No, it's in, a, like, a warehouse, you know. Oh, yeah. No, all of these matches took place in, like, VFW halls, for sure. Well, this is before. Yeah. This is, like, before WrestleMania. So. I looked it up. This came out the same year that the Saturday Night Main Event premiered. Ah, uh, rock and wrestling. There you go. Speaking of rock and wrestling, let's talk about Bring the it. songs in this movie. <laughs> oh, greatest soundtrack ever. They are universally amazing. Do you want to dance? Do you want to body slam? Do you want That's a great, I also like, I just like breaking bones. But there's one thing that really turns me on. I want to hear the crunch. I want to hear the crash. I want to hear the bones and groan. I don't know why, but I'm only happy breaking bones. Breaking bones. Great.
And let's not forget the theme, what has to be the theme for Grunt, rock and roll and wrestling tonight. Everything is bigger than life, 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 wrestling tonight. Rock and roll and wrestling tonight. Yeah, wrestling tonight. Loved it. How wrestling tonight was it, especially since they played that song like four times. How that wasn't yes. the name of the movie. Yeah, they played all the songs a, a couple times at least. Now, I have some information for you about these songs. Uh-oh. Number one, I did not realize until the end credits that the song Wrestling Tonight is about the movie. That the Correct. lyrics of yeah. the song are the, what happens in the movie. Yeah, what's happening. Right. Yeah. Come on, man. Captain Carnage, Dr. Tweed, The Mask, Miss Linda, and Adrian Street. The human bomb shelter, Jake the Snake, ask Mad Dog to curse oh, if it's real or fake. Secondly, did you happen to notice who wrote and performed Wrestling Tonight? I don't know, but I'm going to guess Jimmy Hart. I don't know. All right, so you're sitting down, right? Like you're sitting. Oh, I'm sitting. Okay, you're ready. Sit. Are you ready? No. Okay. Now I am. Sha na na. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's even better yeah. is I I have met a member of Shanana and I have been taught law school classes by such a man. I that's exactly what got me so excited. <laughs> now whether or not now if he was a part of Shanana at this time I couldn't tell you. He probably was. Probably. Uh, may, now, that said, no, no, not as personal, but no less amazing. The rest of the songs mm -hmm. written and performed by one right. person. Excellent. Adrian Street. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good job, Adrian Street. He is exotic. He has a big part in this movie. He was a huge, he was a huge star in, oh, at I that know. time. But he's got a big part. And what amuses me was, so as, as a person who runs a public access television station, he has in this movie, I don't know if this is real or not, but he has the most amazing, I guess, public access TV I show, which is called Adrian's so Street. No, it wasn't public access. It was okay. much like... Um, you know, Rowdy Piper had the Piper's Pit, and Brother Love had the, uh, I can't remember, the Love something, I don't I, I don't know that. Uh, and, uh, Undertaker and Paul Bearer had the, um, Death Parlor or something, you know, things like that. I was unaware, but good news. Yes, this is a very, it's a very popular trope in professional wrestling. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Still no less amazing. There's an, also another TV show in this called, yeah. called Wally George's Hot Seat. This is the program that tells it the way it is. I want you to take a look at a little phony film footage so you can see at home. Even when they try, they can't do anything right in the Soviet Union. He's, he's a very, he's a very, like, Bill O'Reilly type character who is also apparently a real person. And that was a real yeah, he's TV a real guy. show. It's a real thing. And he's also apparently in Nightmare on Elm Street 5 doing the same thing. And I'll tell you, this film was smuggled in to this country from the Soviet Union by those wonderful people in the CIA. <laughs> Uh, talking about some of the other wrestlers that are in this movie, at one point, I don't think we see her, but they mention a female wrestler called The Killer Tomato, which might yes. be the greatest wrestler name I have ever heard in my life. The Killer Tomato. The Grunt Brothers are pretty great. Well, we're going to make him think and understand that the worst thing he ever did was wrestle against the Grunt Brothers. We're gonna take him, yeah. and we're gonna crush yeah. him in my face. Yeah, I like them. That's Dick Murdoch, and uh, I can't remember his partner's name, but they're a real tag team. 
in the movie, a couple of just Australian maniacs, pretty much. Yep, 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 yep. There was all, there's a guy called the Golden Greek, which I don't even know what to say about that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was awesome. He's pretty great. He was a good manager, man. I, I haven't seen something like him in years and years. He was, he was fantastic. There were some pretty good managers in this. Yeah, we got to see some boobies too on one of them. Oh, easy now. <laughs> hey, hey, get you the real copy of this movie, and you're good. Uh, the masks French uh, manager is pretty great. I like her little dog that also has a mask on. Yeah, that was perfect. That was perfect. That was pretty great. Um, and you mentioned earlier we had um, Matilda the Hun and Salt from Glow have a match in this. Right, correct. That's pretty good. And then there's a thing in this movie that is simultaneously the greatest and worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Go on. The Great Pyramid. Oh, yes. How could I forget that? Oh, my gosh. That was amazing. It is maybe the best reveal I've ever seen in a movie because you think the ma like so the mask is in the ring. They've talked up the Great Pyramid. They cut to this guy in the ring who's like seven foot tall, like Dolph Lundgren, and wearing this black robe. And then he takes the robe off. Come on, you big luck. Come on, come on, come on. And he's four little people sitting on each other's shoulders. And they kicked his butt. They split into a group and take it. And it's pretty great. I could have done without the voices. Right. Yeah, that was absurd. That was a, a little offensive, but otherwise kind of amazing. Yeah, I thought he was going to take his robe off and he was going to look like uh, Xerxes in 300. But nope, he did not. They, I tell you, they did not ruin that reveal one bit. That was amazing. It was amazing. That was amazing. Oh, what a movie. What a movie. Some great matches. A guy really gets his head whacked into a turnbuckle at one point. Yeah, that was there's some good action in the movie. Good wrestling action. Yeah, it's good stuff. There's all, there is, I'm looking at my notes here. There's a bunch of great oh. there's a bunch of great lines in this movie. We've mentioned most of them, I think. But I have to give a shout out. So the the movie as I th if you're at home, I think you figured this movie out. It's mostly wrestling match, wrestling match, wrestling match. And then at the end there's like a big battle royale that gets whittled down to right. um that gets reeled down to like I think Adrian Street and the mask and then Mad Dog shows up just in time to stop the mask from like decapitating a guy. Captain Carnage is who he's yeah, going to decapitate. that's right. At which point, by the way, <laughs> Mad Dog returns. His girlfriend, who we've met earlier in the movie, jumps into the ring, and Mask just punches her right in the face. As if we needed right, another getting, heel turn from this guy. You're getting to what the movie's actually about. Oh, and what's that? It is a love story between Mad Dog and that woman. So what you're telling me is that this movie is about two characters who are in it a combined three minutes. You tell me what else is it about. I'll tell you what it's about. Rock and roll and wrestling tonight. Hey, man, do you, do you want to dance? Do you want to body slam? love breaking bones i'm telling you it's a love story between those two characters it listen but at any rate like in this battle royale at one point there's this big pile on 
and one of the announcers says, three tons of flesh are now heaped upon Cowboy Steve. Miller body presses him. Hey, what's going on here? I feel like I'm in a meat packing plant. Three tons of flesh are now heaped on top of poor Cowboy Steve. That might be the greatest line in movie history. Hey, you know what? If you're just tuning in to Bad Movie Brothers and you haven't watched any of our movies yet, watch this one. I think it's on YouTube. It is hard to find. Pretty sure it's on YouTube. Pretty sure. Pretty, pretty sure. There's also a weird scene I wanted to point out where this is in the director and Dr. Tweed portion of the movie. They go to a wrestling gym. Ugh. They go to a wrestling gym and they oh, meet yes. like a wrestling trainer. And his thing is right. that he curses all the time. But they've bleeped uh -huh. all of the curses. Wait a minute. Who are you, f What the hell are you doing here, you f Right. So confusing. Why? I, it, you know what? Uh, to me, it's a little funnier when it's all bleeped out. It is, but the re they curse throughout the rest of the movie without bleeps. I know. So I, know. I did not I know. understand Very strange. that choice. It's very strange. It's a weird movie, which is, makes it all the better. It's perfect. It perfect, is not, perfect. It is not a movie that would be made by Hollywood or someone who knew how to make a movie. And you know what? That's one of my questions is, did they make this? Like, I assume that one of the regional wrestling territories made this movie and then just showed it one weekend instead of their actual wrestling matches. It's hard to say. It feels, I, it's something like that. Like, I feel like some promoter or some manager or something got it in his head that, to make a movie. And I don't know right. if he was influenced by rumblings of what, was, of what the WWF was going to become, you know, if this was some sort of a cash grab or an attempt to beat somebody to the punch or what. But I, it's so strange because it's not like, a specific territory like is shown it's right. not like the NWA it's not Jim Crockett it's not Vern Gagne I don't know like what they're doing it's just a bunch of random guys it seems like it's a bunch of wrestlers from like the southwest but in such a in a very broad sense like from Texas to California yeah a lot of it's very California based guys a lot yeah. of those guys are California so, I don't know. It's, when we started doing this show, the dream was to find a movie no one had ever heard of and be amazed by it. <laughs> you did it. And that may have happened today. <laughs> you did it, brother, brother. Oh, yeah! So, so much so that I don't really have a lot to say about it. Well, no, because I was sitting there enjoying it. I wasn't writing notes <laughs> down. This was the rare kick back and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, you know, another great part is when they go to Mad Dog's old apartment <laughs> with the uh, with the woman in it, mm -hmm. and she just gives them a bunch of tape, and somehow it's just tape out and about, like willy-nilly. They're just tape yeah. that they're taking down down the street, and then she starts throwing stuff at them. It's classic, classic, classic. Let's, t we need to talk about the end of this movie. Because at, this movie builds to that stunning climax wherein Mad Dog returns and then wins it all, right? And right. then there's another five minutes of the movie. Right. Wherein now we have to have this epilogue where we see what has become of the director and Dr. Tweed. So, here's, a, here's another great question for you. Sure. The director's name, I can't remember his name, something like Goggins, Guggins, uh, something, Gubbins. Sure. Walton I can't remember Goggins, sure. But, 
Okay, sure. Yeah, that's not it, but okay. whatever. When we meet him, when we meet him, he goes, yeah, my name's Walton Goggins, but not that Walton Goggins. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we supposed to, are we supposed to know who he's not? I don't um, understand. I feel like I got the joke at the time, but I don't remember who it was. We'll cut it in right I, I, here. Hi, I'm Leslie Uggams. No, not the Leslie Uggams. Yeah. And yeah. And they're like in the back of a truck on that scene. They're like in an 18-wheeler truck. That's where the studio is. Well, it's that scene in particular is very Spinal Tap. Because there's that scene at the beginning of yeah. Spinal Tap where Rob Reiner, as his character, is like sitting on a commercial set and he goes, hi, I'm a direct, you know, there's that whole thing. So that feels like a pretty direct lift, but outside, yeah. like, it's almost like they, and I, they were working on this and they saw Spinal Tap and they went, that's how we tie it together. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and then, like you're talking about the ending of the movie, we have this great battle royal. Mm-hmm. Mad Dog comes in and, and wins the day. Right. And then we get Walton, Walton Goggins again, and all he says is he has no ending to the movie, and then that basically makes the movie have no ending to it. Well, and then we, the credits are watching them walk across a street yeah. to get, like, some fried chicken or something. Yeah, they're, like, at a pawn shop, and then they go to a fried chicken place. It's super because, again, this movie had the ending. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, like I, this is. It was the end of the love story. They got back together, yeah. and it was all good. Well, it's ninety. I feel like all of that stuff is just padding to get it to ninety minutes. Like hey, they felt like they needed it, it, and then loved it. Yeah, let me let me watch a couple of guys beat on each other. Ideally, with those southern announcers the whole time. <laughs> she was great. Yeah, she was. She was fantastic. The masked manager for Fru Fru, or whatever her name is, is, is begging her fighter to get back in the ring and stop El Toro's dancing. Oh, the brute has been embarrassed, something awful out there. So that's Grunt. I don't know. Do you have anything else to say about Grunt? Oh, well, let me ask you a question. Please. Being a slight to, at most, mediocre wrestling fan. <laughs> The, an extremely fair assessment. Go on. Yeah. A, Did fan, you... a fan of the idea of wrestling, perhaps. Did you like the characters more or the actual wrestling action? Ooh, good question. I liked the action in the Battle Royale. Um, I was often frustrated by the way the matches were filmed because mm -hmm. a lot of the time they were filmed ringside, and I wanted right. them to be kind of up in the air so I could see the action better. Right. But yes, that said, you have hit the nail on the head. I am much more attracted to the colorful characters than to the actual wrestling shenanigans. But I did enjoy the wrestling in this. Okay. All right. And I enjoyed... Good to know. I enjoyed... Like, it gave me a thing that I don't feel like I can get right now. Because it's not like if you watch WWE, it's wrestling quite like this. No. And you can't, and that Lucha Libre show on El Rey isn't, I think, particularly good. Lucha Underground. Yeah. Which I had high hopes for, but also didn't particularly appeal to me. But to be able to get in the time machine that is Grunt, the wrestling movie, and go back to the 80s and watch that style of wrestling, I did very much enjoy, and it did make me want to not go to a wrestling match today, but, like, wish I could go to one in the mid-1980s at, like, a VFW or something. And you know what? Let me recommend something for the viewers and yourself. Okay, all right. If... You have Amazon Prime. Which I do. They, ha they have several episodes of Memphis Wrestling on it from the mid-1980s to the mid-1990s. Okay. Very good stuff. All right. I'll have to check that out. 
very similar to this sort of movie. Well, I did enjoy this movie. It's, it may have finally toppled my chauffeur. I, it's at least neck and neck for me. I certainly understand the appeal for you. Yeah, it goes over for me. But this is, it's, this is a rare movie. It's going to be difficult to ever top this movie, I think. And it didn't break KFA, brother, brother. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that, I think, do you have anything else? I'm good. Well, that was, that was Grunt, the wrestling the movie. The wrestling movie. We enjoyed it. You should check it out. And we will see you next time with another Bad Movie Brothers. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Captain Carnage, Dr. Tweed, the mask, Miss Linda and Adrian Street, the human bomb shelter, Jake the snake, ask the mad dog to curse if it's real or fake. Golden Greek told us the giant coo